Moravis has just been doing work here, really, for TT Esports. And this definitely goes back to just Moravis in general just being such a solid player and no doubt a very, very good replacement for a player like WTF. As far as, you know, similarities really, I mean, just the consistency. WTF definitely got a lot of praise for just being a very consistent player. I think Moravis is definitely one of the more consistent players out there as well. He'll always give you a solid to good game, it seems like. And no doubt doing that again here. I, I got to respectfully disagree with there about WTF. I think he was actually, uh, he was one of the more fun heroes to watch, but I've seen him on his very, very high highs and very, very low lows. Yeah. And I, I've seen him some games where he just dominates, and then I've, I've actually even scrimmed a long time ago with Slicks and just, <laughs> some very, very off games. Let's just say I, I've seen some very interesting games okay. where WTF has played Pharaoh in particular. Yeah, yeah. But um, I'll tell you, when he's on his high, he just looks like one of the best players in the game. Uh, but in general, his 1v1, yeah, I'll agree with that. His 1v1 skills are very, very consistent. Mm -hmm. He's so strong in a 1v1 matchup. And, and, and this is a very, very similar role as Moravis. So, yeah, we've said before that this replacement of Moravis in for uh, WTF is very, very smooth transition, I think, for the whole TTE Sports squad. Yeah. Well, well, only because you're respectful. I'll, I'll, I'll lay off. I'll, I'll, I'll be, you know, it's okay. You won't no. beat me up. Well, won't beat you up, you know. Yeah, so yeah. right next to me, no. No, yeah. I, I, I could definitely see that. I mean, from my experience from watching him in games of Cats, it just seems like that he just has that style. But, you know, maybe from yours of playing more, perhaps. But uh, kind of interesting situation here. Actually, Moon Crew will get caught here at the top lane. She's going to try to escape right here. But that slow from the turret comes out. And down she goes as Tempest eventually follows. That's why it's so risky pushing by yourself on a hero like Moon Queen in this case. Yeah. Uh, with those portal keys, man. I mean, even if you see the ports coming, it's still dangerous now. In the meantime, in the middle, and the play goes passing around. Valkyrie oh. will pick up White Shade. Glacius goes down. Warby's trying to chase down Valkyrie now. You see Valkyrie, she's leaping away. She does have an assassin shroud, by the way. One more auto attack will do in Warby. Steam bath maybe for Magnus. Do something. No, Warby's is going to port out, and he will be fine. Feral's trying to run. Looking at the front line, though. Valkyrie's sitting here. She's waiting for the right time to open. Will it be soon? No, it will not, apparently. Nice done for Magnus after the tablet use, and Feral will eventually fall to the kicks and be an assist. And look at Valkyrie. She's just going to run away more than fine. So just kind of adding insult to injury right there. TT Esports big time coming through. Another grouping up. And they're going to mass push this middle lane. I don't know if the Hellborn team has much to stop this here when it comes down to it. Other than the fact that they're resurrecting pretty quickly at this point. So uh, they're going to try. You see Valkyrie prison? No, that was a cancel. Just doing some cancel animation there. We do see a portal key away. No, it's over here to Clay. She's just trying to be a little bit sneaky, I guess. Unfortunately, did not work out the greatest. Tempest does still have his Portal Key Ultimate to go, so got to keep that in mind as well if you are Pudge. Now the Melee Rax is taking a lot of damage here. Pudge is doing a good job of spreading out, but really, what is that accomplishing in the end? Moon Queen will get jumped on. In comes Tempest. The Comet's put down. Moon Queen dropping quickly, and Moon Queen will eventually fall right here. Yes, the Glacial Blast is too much damage coming out of the stun. And she eventually falls. Storm Spirit on the Warbeast. Melee Rax goes down. There's the energy field coming out. The Lava Search right on top. And the kick's done in the face of Warbeast. Leon Black picks up a double tap kill. Oh. And all the Slicks gets bursted down right there with the Silver Bullet combo. But the GG's are being called. And it looks like it is going to become official here in just a matter of seconds even. With TT Esports defeating Dendi's Jungle Devos here. <laughs> <laughs> Game number two is to take the series. Oh, man, I love that name. Not really. But anyways, very well played by both teams, I must say. I really was, and it definitely I look forward to seeing more of this squad here with Pudge as we won the loser's bracket even still. But TT Esports, as I said going into this, they are definitely uh, even expected by a lot of people out there as, as kind of being that next team to be invited to DreamHack Winner 2012 along with Complexity. So good start for them so far in the quarterfinals. Yeah, the practice has paid off, certainly. They've doing, been doing a lot of scrimming, and it's been showing. And, uh, you know, Pudge did put up a, a good fight specifically in game one. That was yeah. actually a really, really fun game to watch. It was turning into a nail biter there uh, towards the end with that huge turnaround with a quad kill from Dark Lady. Much closer game, unfortunately, game two. Um, the strategy just simply didn't work out. Yeah. Um, TD Esports ran ve uh, very, very aggressive, even with the Concord uh, being up with uh, the Concord advantage there with the golden experience. Um, and the token of life on Witch Slayer. That, yeah. that mid lane was just too volatile <laughs> for Witch Slayer, and he died repeatedly. So good job by Leon Black and Moravis there in that mid lane specifically. And then the whole TT Sports squad, the, the drafting from Slicks and the laning was very, very good. 
Um, just overall well played from TT Esports, and I would not be surprised to see them, uh, you know, progress very, very far in this tournament, if not take it. Yeah, and you know, again, looking back at Pudge real quickly, the strategic mind is definitely there. You can tell it's just as far as the execution is concerned, it just wasn't the greatest, and that goes back to the level one conquer kill. Smart as awesome as that was, smart as that was, you know, just not able to execute the most off of that. And game number one is kind of a similar situation as far as their setups and everything, as far as being able to execute their solid setups, and you know, the amplified dark hoodie farm and taking advantage of scenarios so but a lot of those are things that will come with time so yep. again that's why i really want to stress you know i hope a team like this aren't discouraged which honestly i don't think they will be it seems like a, in that pregame interview at least mega beaver was very happy with this team currently and uh, they should be happy after i know this was a loss you're not necessarily enjoy by any means not jumping up and down but you know <laughs> still excited that they at least could compete with tt esports knowing that there's still uh many more things to happen in the future and with that said they still are in this tournament because it is a double elimination tournament and let's take a quick look at the brackets actually to see you know where this match puts us here when it comes down to it so as you can see as we talked about tomorrow's matchup guys complexity versus orange esports malaysia that will be taking place tomorrow the winner's bracket semifinals at 12 p.m pacific 3 p.m. Eastern, 2100 Central European Time, the same time every day. So tune into that tomorrow. Trademark Esports versus TT Esports. That is going to be the next matchup for the Winners Bracket Semifinals. And that one is actually going to take place on the 23rd. So we're going to have a two-day break after the Complexity Orange matchup, which will be on Thursday. And then on Sunday is when we come back at you with Trademark versus TT Esports. And then that'll be a double header day, though, because after that matchup, then we'll go to the loser's bracket, and then we'll come at you with 15 versus Pikachu. So okay. that's kind of our, our, our current schedule that we're looking at here. Again, every single match here from these brackets will be casted here on Honcast.com. So plenty of great matchups still to come, starting with tomorrow, Trelf. Yeah, let's talk just a little bit about tomorrow with Orange Esports taking on Complexity. Now, unfortunately, uh, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think WTF is actually going to be able to make it due to some travel reasons. I believe that is the case. The last time I heard, which was yesterday, but unfortunately, they did try to get it rescheduled. It just wasn't going to work out, though, because of this very strict schedule that they have here for the Redemption Tournament. And so I believe he's traveling to Malaysia, or, or he's flying He's flying somewhere, and it just unfortunately just may not work out. So from the last I heard, he will not be there. Okay, well, that's that. unfortunate. Um, he was a, from what we saw, or well, actually you weren't there, but from what I saw, yeah. um, he was a great addition to the squad. He's been playing very, very solid lately, and I think he's been given a little. It's kind of ironic. It's kind of funny because uh, I feel like he was removed from TD Sports for lack of yeah. commitment and all that jazz. But uh, it seems like he's been playing a lot more now that he's been with his homeboys in Malaysia yeah. and, and Orange Esports. But uh, he's been really, really fun to watch. But with that game, that match in particular, tomorrow, Complexity versus Orange, that should be really, really fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Orange always seems to put on a show. They always kind of... I don't want to say they draft silly anymore. I think they draft a lot more standard, um, like, like the international scene does. But they do play a bit more aggressive, from what I can see. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very, very fun to watch. It's very spectator-friendly. I don't know how much research they've done from Complexity, because Complexity's strategy is just so solid, so yeah. sound. Um, so, um, yeah, it should be a lot of fun to watch, guys. Now, do you still think that complexity is going to keep that uh, winning streak going? you see them dropping yes. a game? Nope. All right. No, I think they're going to win. <laughs> so, with that said, <laughs> with I, that think said I think they're going to win too well. <laughs> like, but, hey, very but, hey, expect to see a good show at least. Now, I, I, I kind of agree with you. I mean, it is going to be interesting, especially with not being able to play WTF. That, that is going to be a hurt, of course, for Orange Esports yeah. if that is the case. But still... At the very least, expect a good matchup because it definitely is two very powerful named teams. And always, you know, especially with complexity, I know they have probably the, the largest fan base even out there right now. So I'm sure there's plenty of viewers out there really looking forward to tomorrow. So tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody. We're coming back tomorrow with complexity versus Orange Esports, and that'll be a lot of fun. But we are going to be covering every single match here in this tournament bracket. I cannot stress that enough, guys. It'll go all the way until the grand finals, which is set to pl take place on, on September 30th. Uh, which is a Sunday, I believe, actually. So that works out pretty damn well. Yeah, September 30th, a Sunday, which will be a best out of five, no penalty grand finals, meaning you come for the loser's bracket, it don't matter. You got to the grand finals, you're going to play a straight-up best out of five nice. for the chance for that prize pool, uh, which uh, in total is over $10,000 prize pool, by the way. Again, to stress that, it's actually a $7,000 individual prize pool, but then, of course, there's a $4,000 travel stipend on top of that if you do indeed get to qualify for DreamHack winner. Uh, to, to help you get there. So, yeah, so much is on the line, but, of course, that DreamHack winter trip is definitely the big part of that. Who will it be? It ain't going to be complexity, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but it's going to be somebody else going to DreamHack winter 2012. 
and uh, really excited to see who's going to be joining Complexity so far with that said. So, Trout, another day in the books, another great yep. series. Any final words from you? Nope, just uh, GG well played by both teams. I'm looking forward to tomorrow for Complexity taking on Orange Esports. It's going to be fun, guys. So once again, I'm Breaking CPK. Joining me is Trout from Midor. Big shout-out to Killer Orange as well as a shout-out to our Twitters. You can follow Trout at Trout on. And this guy, Breaky CPK. At Breaky CPK. There you go, guys. So definitely check that out. Follow us. Doing some giveaways. Just having some fun. And also at Honcast. And then follow the Honcast Facebook or like it even. Because of plenty of updates on there. But that's going to do it for tonight, though, guys. I bid you adieu. We'll see you tomorrow, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, 2100 Central European Time. Complexity versus Orange Esports Malaysia coming at you. See you then.